Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media. Today we're going to be learning the real secret to making a good mix and keeping things in mind when writing to make the mix easier in the engineering process. Let's hop into the studio so I can reveal this secret to you. Awesome guys, so this video is going to be a little bit different in that we aren't going to cover a single technique that you can apply to your songwriting that's going to make your tracks better or something along those lines because there really isn't a single trick or secret to making a good mix. Every single engineer has their own mixing style. Every single song calls for a different style of mix. So this video is just going to be in a chat format. I'm just going to tell you guys some cool workflow techniques that I employ in my own writing and mixing process and some things that you might want to keep in mind while writing and mixing your own tracks to create not an objectively better mix because there is no such thing, but learn to control the mix and do what you want to do in the mix and not let the song itself get out of control. So one of the biggest techniques that I like to teach, and I do private lessons if you guys are interested in that, you can check out the contact info in the description below. Um, but one of the biggest techniques I like to teach is that of contrast. Now, if we look at this from a graphic design perspective, let's say you have a pink wall and you have a red foreground object. Now, this red foreground object on that pink is not going to contrast very well. It's going to blend into that pink because they're very, very similar colors. If we replace that pink or that red with a yellow color, um, then we can start to see a bigger contrast between those two images. This can be applied to a audio perspective when we start to use plugins like reverb or delay where if everything has reverb or delay, nothing has reverb or delay. You can kind of expand on this in a more general sense if you think of it as if everything is wet, nothing is wet, and if everything is dry, nothing is dry. The contrast between wet and dry is what really can make things stick out in a mix, and you can learn to control which elements are really poking through the mix via doing so. A really good example of this technique is vocals. Now a lot of people are first to put reverb and delay and everything else on their vocals. I actually like to keep my vocals very dry. If you listen to a lot of my music you can hear that. The dry signal almost pops out against that contrasty wet signal of the rest of the mix. If I have a pad in the background and I have a dry vocal over it, the dry vocal is going to pop out like a sore thumb and it's going to be right in your face whereas the pad with all the reverb and delay is going to be sitting in the background. The other thing to keep in mind is that higher frequencies tend to sound like they're closer to you. If you think about this in a scientific sense, if you're in a stadium and you play a very, very loud tone like a boat horn or something like that, it's going to resonate much farther It's because lower frequencies travel in longer wavelengths as you know and shorter frequencies travel in shorter wavelengths which don't penetrate through the air as well and can only travel but so far. So you can kind of use this to your advantage if you want to make something sound farther away. You can chop the top off with a low pass filter and you can give the illusion of something being very close to you by giving it a top boost, let's say a boost at uh, 10k. As a practical example of this, if I have a vocal and a pad next to each other, I'm going to low pass the pad, I'm going to put some reverb on it, and I'm going to make it sound as far in the background as I can, while the vocal is very, very dry. It's not going to have a lot of reverb at all, if any, and I'm going to give a high boost with a shelf um, on the EQ settings for that vocal. This isn't a rule of thumb, as you can reverse these two. If you want the pad to be in your face, you can give it a high boost reduce the reverb on that and then set the vocal in the background with some reverb and maybe a low pass filter. Again, as I reiterate, the contrast between a very wet or low pass signal and a very high and dry signal is what can really create the illusion of something being really in your face or not. One reason I really endorse the mousetrap label is because a lot of the engineers over there really understand this idea of contrast very well and they utilize it in a lot of their writing styles. Artists like No Mana and Atlas are very, very good at this. If you guys are interested in really innovative mixes that kind of utilize this contrasty effect, you can go ahead and click on their links in the description below. I put up some good songs of theirs that really illustrate how this contrasty effect can create an illusion of space in a mix. The second thing is writing music with mixing in mind. Uh, the saying or the ideology less is more really, really holds true here. 
So when you think of a traditional mix, let's say you have a five piece rock band, you have a bass, a drum, a guitar, a piano, and a singer. The reason why we use these instruments in a typical sense is because of their octave range. A lot of people like to approach mixing in frequency. They like to say, if this sound has 2000 hertz, this other sound can't have 2000 hertz. So I'm going to pull that out and then I'm going to leave it in for this other sound. Now this can work, but it becomes very, very surgical and it becomes almost trying to balance two things that are unbalanceable. If you have two things in the exact same octave playing at the exact same frequency level, it becomes very hard to balance the two sounds. Another technique that I like to teach my students is to write in octaves. Think about these five piece instruments that we discussed in the rock band scenario. We have a bass which is playing at a very very low octave. You have a guitar that's up an octave or maybe two. You have a piano that's somewhere in between there maybe a little bit higher than that. You have the vocal on top of that even and you have the drums kind of just pushing through everything else. Now the drums you don't really have to worry about balancing because you're going to be side chaining and they're very percussive. They're going to punch through the mix anyway but when you get into very legato-esque instruments like guitars or bass, you're going to want to kind of think about mixing when you're writing the sound themselves. So if you have a bass in C1, for example, if I open a MIDI clip here, a bass might be in C2, C1, C0, you're not going to want to have a guitar playing in this exact same range. You're going to want the guitar maybe at C1 or C2. That's even a little bit low for a guitar. And then maybe your piano you're going to want at C3 or C1 even. But you never really want two or more sounds to conflict in the exact same octave range. Don't think of mixing in frequencies. Think of it in octaves. If you have one sound in C0, it's going to have more than... Uh, likely conflicting frequencies with any other sound playing in C0 regardless of the tone of the sound. There's a few exceptions to this where if you have a very soft sound like we were discussing before and you set it in the back of the mix it can be in the exact same frequency range the C1 octave um, as another sound but again it's better to think of this in terms of octaves and not have two of the exact same uh, notes playing on any two instruments or more. It's a very fascinating idea. It's the reason why orchestras and rock bands are set up the way they are. Every single instrument has a different range of those octaves. And it's also the reason why choirs have different singers and different um, performers that can perform in different octaves of the piece themselves. Uh, tenor, alto, baritone, etc. Awesome, guys. So if this video helped you or if it gave you some cool insight or ideas to add to your workflow and maybe if it kind of opened your eyes give the video a like let me know what you think in the comments below also suggest future videos i do occasional polls on twitter on things that you guys might want to see in the future and you guys can kind of vote on things that you want to see on the channel on twitter and in my facebook group both of those links are going to be in the description below Make sure to subscribe to the channel. I also have Patreon if you guys want to support the channel. You can get videos early before they come out on YouTube. So I make a video every Wednesday and Friday when I can. I am Julian of Julian Gray Media, and until the next video, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.